How's this look? I think this is going to work, yeah. So hi, I'm Ellie, I'm a CRS major, Conservation Resource Studies, and my course thread was Humanities and Environment. And actually I'm gonna present a two semester research project that I did while I was in the course threads program. And the three course threads, courses that I did are Introduction to Conservation Resource Studies, um, Landscape, Sustainable Landscapes and Cities, and then also Political Ecology. And so um, this two semester qualitative research case study is actually, was actually done at the Student Organic Garden, um, and it examines eco-pedagogical practices employed during the fall 13 and 14 semesters. Um, primarily, this research brings in the student's perspective on how education is experienced at a hands-on outdoor learning lab, such as this geography. Um, I asked when I was looking at how I would approach this project, what is happening here in the garden, geography and pedagogy that we as educators and curriculum developers can learn from. Um, critical pedagogy and experiential learning theory are the foundation of the theoretical framework that I used. Um, since the learning in the garden is hands-on, it's experience-based and in direct contrast to the lecture-based model, banking model of education that's dominantly practiced at the university. Um, sorry, not only are students, um, excuse me, learning about agricultural science, they are learning this in the field while engaging kinetically and socially in a whole body experience that is dynamic and highly sensory. Vygotsky's Zona's proximal development suggests that there are two levels of cognitive development. The first level is that which a learner has already attained, and the second level is that which the learner can attain if given the social support of another person. Vygotsky argues that the learning takes place in the space between the two levels, and these theories all overlap to place value in subjective and engaged scholarship that promote critical thinking, collaboration, and connection to place. So this is actually um, a learning ecology diagram that I made about the garden. Um, it's a complex learning environment and it's made up of multiple human and natural elements and they're all interrelated in conversation with each other. These interactions all contextualize the garden learning ecology. First, looking at the top, the garden represents nature's agency in directing the learning experience. So we're learning outside, so this is dictated by weather, time of year, biophysical characteristics, ecology, and the types of plants, trees, and organisms that the students are interacting with. Then the learners, characterized by prior experience, beliefs, values, attitudes, identities, demographic learning goals, their expectations for the class, their preferred learning styles, and their sense of agency that they feel when they're learning. And the educators represent the various pedagogies, beliefs, values, knowledge of the subject matter, and teaching strengths. Lastly, the learning context deals with the number of students in the class, the type of class, whether it be decals, labs, open hours, workshops, the learning contact, content and the activity. These four realms intersect to produce a learning environment that is socially and ecologically constructed and determined by the power dynamics laid out in the learning context. All of these interaction, interacting elements overlap to form a central experience in the center is the zone of proximal development, which is a collectively created embodied learning process that I've labeled getting our hands dirty. This research actually looks at what leads to particular pedagogical practices employed in the garden, characterized by the phrase getting our hands dirty, and what results from that experience of learning. Getting our hands dirty is actually a phrase that came up when I, through all of the data sources and almost every group of students that they said is like the name of what they did when they were in the garden. So I decided that I would call it that. Since learners in the garden are making meaning via their sense perceptions in a socially interactive setting, Vygotsky's theories are highly relevant. Learners are not only talking amongst each other, but there's also a conversation with the non-human world during garden education. So in here you can see um, that there's a question that I asked in my methodology with five descriptive words that capture your experience in the garden today. 
And in the fall 2013 semester, I participated and observed a total of 11 classes. Five were ESPM 117 lab sections, and that's the intro to organic or um, sustainable agriculture, urban agriculture, and food justice. I also participated and observed two farm field days for ESPM 155, which is called Sustenance and Sustainability. Two buggy decal workshops, which is Berkeley Urban Garden Internship, and two community open hour workshops, totaling 132 students. My data sources included questionnaires, interviews, field notes, and reflective papers. In all incidences, I administered a post-learning experience questionnaire where I asked students this question, the five descriptive words. This is actually a word cluster illustrating the collective answers with the most commonly occurring words appearing the largest and the least common words appearing the smallest. The illustration really captures the essence of how students are experiencing learning at the garden. The most commonly occurring words are fun, informative with engaging, interesting, happy, and dirty showing up also. That students were engaged, it shows that students were engaged cognitively as well as effectively during the learning process in the garden. I also um, came up with a theoretical narrative of the learning process and there's a rich cycle of embodied social experiential pedagogy where students get their hands dirty together. So that's looking at number one. And during this, students realize their agency in shaping the garden, and it becomes a part of them, creating an investment in the place. Dirt gets under their fingernails, and it's carried with them, much like we carry our education. Then hard work instills value into the land, and personal pride in work well done is realized through the magic of harvests while reaping the fruits of labor. Not only do students realize the labor involved in farming sustainably and organically, but they also acquire a sense of ownership over the garden through working the land. This is actually integral to the continued maintenance of the garden since it's 100% student run. Once a student develops the identity as a garden steward, they are initiated into the community of practice, the Student Organic Garden Association. During their own through their own dedication to caring for the garden, as now is their place, sanctuary, and lo location of cultural production. They are then inspired to recreate those experiences of learning for other new students through facilitating decals or workshops, and the cycle is renewed. So let's focus in on actually the pedagogy of getting our hands dirty. This finding, the findings illustrate how instances of grounding knowledge is in our bodies and the earth and a pedagogy of getting our hands dirty emerge as a zone of proximal development. This embodied pedagogy was characterized by a highly sensory social experience of meaning making that eroded social barriers. Students stomped, kneaded, and twisted in a mountain of mud sharing stories about gardening during the case of building the cob bench and getting to know each other as they worked alongside each other. So on this slide is some of the students' words that I pulled from my data sources. And one student says, to build cob, you need to get the right consistency. Just the perfect amount of water and some good mixing tools, in this case, our bodies. Another student says, in a way, it felt like I was becoming a part of the garden. Because after I formed the cob to put it into the bench, my handprints in the mud hardened to shape the central meeting point of the community that was newly formed seating circle. And one last student said, stomping in the mud was most enjoyable because it really makes you appreciate the people who you're with that are willing to do that. A zone of proximal development temporally and spatially characterized by a small group of students working together for at least two hours in close proximity forms when students are doing physical work that engages their kinetic and material skill development beyond just psychomotor. Students collectively provide scaffolding for each other, creating the opportunity for effective cognitive development. In the zone of proximal development, students deliberate about the technical issues of how to do the task at hand, but also subjective interpretive issues surrounding social justice and one's own place in the sustainable food movement. This research illustrates the importance of including student farms in the curricula is locations that foster democratic experiential learning communities for educating agriculture and food systems innovators. The pedagogical practices researched in this paper are not exclusive to UC Berkeley Student Farm, but are characteristic in general of student farms in higher education. Framed by everyday places, the lived, sensory, embodied, and action-based experiences of getting our hands dirty are the foundations on which students genuinely engage with sustainable agriculture experiential education. 
the enabling pedagogies and practices are transformational in that they offer new and different ways to reconceptualize and inform sustainable food systems curricula. In this work, students engage in the world through place-based education and in the process become invested in places where learning occurs. It is necessary to build investment of students into their learning locations in order to cultivate critical self-reflective students prepared to address the issues of sustainable food systems in the world. Thank you. So I tried to keep that at 10 minutes or under. But. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can imagine this pedagogy and this practice working really well with all sorts of different educational levels, especially kids, right? Like the excitement of learning science. Yeah. While they're engaged in playing in mud and doing all these things. Yeah, and I think. One of the main things that came up for me is through reading all the literature that most of it was about kids and about K through 12 education. And so I was really curious about how we could do this at the college level and how that really informs the scholarship that we have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ellie, are there, are there um, in the DECAL classes that the students do, um, are there kind of key texts that you read that have to do with agriculture? Mm -hmm. uh, Oftentimes, the key texts that are read are read in like the lecture section of, and then the lab section is taught in the class. But we actually do have some Student Organic Garden Association decal facilitators in the audience. And so they all teach different ways. And I know that you guys have done readings once in a while, right? There's actually a lot of uh, urban agriculture is highly politically charged. Mm -hmm. And so there's uh, so much current events happening with it. I mean, Mary, you know, with, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have a question that came oh. from this slide. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Why does kale have aphids? I oh, yeah. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> there's a lot of different reasons that kale will have aphids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anytime there's a pest on your plants, there's something going on with the health of the plant or not enough nutrients in the soil. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, I think it's really similar. One of the things that I think is unique about this is in a university setting. So the students are actually coming to it readily, ready to learn, and they have that learning mind state. And, you know, and so in community gardens, the goal a lot of times is to produce yield and food. In this particular garden, the main goal is education. So that would be a, a difference there. Yeah. I also think what makes this different for uh, college and university students is that critical pedagogy part, which basically has a lot to do with um, looking at power structures and societal power structures and uneven and unequal power dynamics in society that contribute to food injustices and that contribute to unequal access to food. And that political aspect is something that you don't get as much in K through 12. So what we're doing here a lot of times is preparing food systems innovators to go out in the world and actually switch from a monoculture industrial based food system to a local organic sustainable food system. So having that overall political awareness and social justice awareness is unique to a 100% student run garden, a garden that has decals, one where we're taking a lot of our social um, lecture based stuff into the garden. Yeah. Okay, thanks.
Thank you.